Hi. In today's video, I'll show you how I made this Mandalorian armor for my Gar Saxon build. Every piece of this armor was made out of these dollar store pizza pans. They're made out of stainless steel, um, and they're relatively robust. Each of them was bought for a dollar from the dollar store, and then backed with 5mm EVA foam. There's a total of four pieces, so the total cost of this is around five dollars. The final result are plates that look very professional. Um, the metal wear showing through is actual metal, which is nice. And it's really quick and easy to make these. So this is a great way to get started making your own Mandalorian armor. There's plenty of resources for patterns for making Mandalorian armor. Uh, there aren't any for this character, so I actually had to draw these up myself. But if you wanted to try this with Boba Fett, it would be super easy. So I hope you enjoy this video. Thanks for watching. I finished my Gar Saxon shirt and vest combo. Now it's time to start making the chest armor. I made a prototype set of the chest armor right here. And did a little bit of weathering practice. And these are made out of dollar store cake pans. These cost a dollar, less than a dollar each to make. And they're, they're made out of actual steel magnet sticks to them. They look really good. They should hold up well. And then they're backed with 10 millimeter EVA foam floor mats. So my final ones are gonna be backed with five millimeter EVA foam, but still made out of the same cake pans. And then I adjusted my patterns slightly. They're a little less wide and they have a shape that's more accurate to the cannon shapes. So I'm gonna start cutting these out and then bending them. This will be used to deeper the edge, just very slight. A couple of these corners got bent when I cut them, so I'm just gonna... Cool. So that's the first piece ready to be bent. Now I'm going to duplicate this for the other chest piece and then make the act. Okay, so that took about 15 minutes with very little tools. Um, I used heavy duty Milwaukee scissors to cut this because it's 0.3 millimeter steel. I just measured it with my calipers. Um, so it cuts pretty easily. It's surprisingly resilient. Um, and once it's got the foam back on it, it will hold its shape pretty well. So my next step will be to bend it into the right shape so that the foam backing can be added. I'm just gonna use this steel water bottle to help roll. That's pretty much the curve I want right there. So this one is a compound curve. It curves along this axis.
Yep, I like that shape. So it curves in that axis and in that axis. Okay, so now they've all been rolled, they have their shape. I'm happy with how they all look. So I'm cutting these out of the foam with an X-Acto knife, leaving a bit of extra material on the outside because since it's curved, it's not going to be the exact dimension that it started as. So I'll trim them to fit after. And I got I just got this 120 pack of X-Acto blades, so it's really nice to use a fresh sharp blade when you're doing stuff like this. Glides effortlessly through the foam. Okay, to permanently attach the foam backing, I'm going to be using contact cement, which I wasn't sure if it worked well with this metal, but it worked really well with the prototype pieces. And I'm making sure that the natural curve to the foam from being rolled is in the same direction as the plate. Okay, now that I've given it time to dry, I'm going to press these two pieces together. Adding this foam to the back will also really help it hold its shape, um, since it would have to delaminate in spots for it to curve or bend more. So. Okay, now it's time to just cut these to shape. And I'm gonna do that with the same X-Acto knife I had before. So that is an armor piece right there. Okay, now I'm just gonna clean these up with the rubber tool. And I'm doing this on the slow speed. Okay, so I have just some regular toothpaste right here and the back of a paintbrush. And I'm going to use the paintbrush to apply it. This is what's going to be used to add the battle damage. And I have a reference image open on my phone right here. Okay, so I have my armor plates laid out here. Now it's time to figure out my mask. Okay, so I have my chest plates masked off now and they're pretty much symmetrical. Now I have the same red paint I used on my helmet and I thinned it down a little bit for the first coat. So I'm going for full coverage over all the black. This would be a perfect time to use my airbrush but since I brushed it by hand onto the helmet, I want to try to keep that same look. So I got 
everything painted. Now it's time to peel the masks. Looks like I got a little bit of bleed on this, but that should be really easy to touch up. And it looks like my mask isn't peeling up any of my paint, which is really nice. It did there, but that's because that spot's been masked off with toothpaste. So now it's time to take all of these and remove all of the toothpaste, revealing the battle damage underneath. Okay, so I've removed all the toothpaste now, revealing the big chunks of battle damage. Now I'm going to take a variety of sandpapers, chisels, and knives and stuff to the edges just to take the paint off a little more. Now it's time to hit these all with a gloss clear coat. Okay, so it was all going really well, and then I sprayed the clear coat on, and it reacted negatively with my paint, and now I have this texture going on. I don't know why I used Rust-Oleum clear coat. I used Rust-Oleum paint. They should work together. Yeah, I'm gonna stop using Rust-Oleum paints. They always... So I always have some issue with them. This really sucks. I'm gonna have to sand it all down now, start over. Not fun, not happy. <sighs> okay, so to deal with this, I'm going to just sand it as smooth as I can to get rid of this snake skin texture. And then repaint it black. Okay, so I thinned down the same acrylic paint that I used to touch everything else up with a little bit of water, and I'm going to use this to apply a dark wash over all these parts. Let it sit for a second, and then I'll wipe it up with a That's what it will be like weathered versus unweathered. Okay, so I'm just gonna do Velcro to attach these. I'm gonna put contact cement on one side and then Velcro on the other. And it's adhesive back Velcro and it should get a really nice grab. And then I'm going to sew Velcro onto the vest itself. That is not going anywhere. Okay, so I have Velcro on the back of each of these pieces. They're laid out where I want them to finally be, so I'm gonna start putting Velcro on the vest itself. This 
looks awesome. Really happy with this. Thanks for watching. I'm really happy with how this turned out. Um, the next thing I have to do is the shoulder armor and the van braces. Those can't be made using the same process, so I'm actually going to have to 3D model my own, print them, and then uh, paint them. So that'll be a separate video. Um, stay tuned on my Instagram at MarkMarksMakes for updates, and uh, thanks for watching.